D&D number one, a healing in Jesus' name. Chapter 25. Filled with emotion, Eric nodded, a silent acknowledgement that he'd heard God's voice. Help me, Rick. We have to try again. We can't give up. Clear your mind. Draw strength from God. We can do this. The men both drew a deep breath and closed their eyes. Crouching low to place their backs against the rock, they pushed, but the rock didn't budge, and Eric looked up into the heavens and uttered one more prayer. Help me. And it came to him, a still, small voice. See the rock as it really is. Eric's mind scrambled. What is it? It's a rock. No, it's matter. No, it's particles of energy coming together to form matter. See the rock as it really is. He told Ricky what God was telling him, and together they saw the rock as millions of particles of energy, as if it were in the transporter of the Starship Enterprise. Bree, come and pull on her as we lift, he ordered. Bree obeyed. She watched as their bodies tensed and muscles strained. Eyes closed, they breathed and pushed, their shoulders and chests bulging, veins and arteries looking as though they would explode, sweat running in streams down their bodies. Shelley's body moved slightly toward Bree. She moved, Bree cried. Don't stop. The, rick, the rock shifted. Bree tugged hard on her mother's cold hands, and Shelley moved again. She's moving. She's coming out, Bree encouraged. The rock is energy. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me, Eric quoted. I am one with the rock. Move, rock. Please, Father, Eric pleaded. Give me strength and the rock moved. They only needed a few inches, a small space. The rock moved again, and suddenly, Shelley was free. The boy stopped crying, and Bree tried to pull Shelley toward the bank, but Eric swung her up as if she were an infant and carried her to the bank and laid her on the ground. Zero pulse, zero respiration, Eric said quietly to Ricky as he glanced at his watch. They turned her, cleared the water from her lungs, and turned her back. Her brown eyes stared blankly at Eric. He breathed two breaths into her mouth. Ricky straddled her waist, his hands firmly on her chest, and started pumping. When he stopped, Eric forced a breath, and Ricky pumped. Eric breathed. Pump. Breathe. After a minute, Eric took her pulse. Nothing. The kids sat behind them, begging their mom to wake up. The men continued CPR. Another minute went by, and Eric checked her pulse again. Nothing. Don't stop. God didn't move that rock only to have her die. Ricky started to pump again. Wait. Eric's eyes lit up. I think he stilled. We have a pulse. Come on, Shelly. Come back to us, he beckoned as he continued breathing for her. The children gathered closer, their tear-stained faces full of hope. Shelly suddenly gasped, coughed. Eric rolled her on her side a moment to clear her lungs again. Her chest heaved as she regurgitated water. Bree and the boys wrapped their arms around each other, laughing as hysterically as they had cried earlier. Eric gathered her body in his arms and held her close as his emotions overflowed. Ricky fell back onto the ground and wept openly. She'd come back to them. God had sent her back to them. However, Eric knew she wasn't out of danger yet. Her body temperature was low and she hadn't regained consciousness, and somehow, though, he knew she'd be fine. He knew because it had been as his master said. The blessing had come true. The power of God had come to his aid. There was no other way they could have moved that rock. A sound filled the air. Joey, look up. The helicopter. Ricky and Bree ran up the bank, waving their arms. Eric kept a close eye on Shelley's face as Mark came slowly to her and covered her with his blanket. Eric gently put his arm around Mark's shoulder. You were very brave today, Mark. I'm proud of you. Mark wearily leaned his head on Eric's chest. You saved my life and Mom's too. Eric shook his head. I had nothing to do with this. This is God's work. He's shown you he is real. Remember this. Don't ever forget it. He put his hand gently on Mark's head. How's your arm? It hurts, but I don't care. Mom's alive. The rescue team made their way down to the bank of the stream, and Eric filled them in as they checked vitals and started inhalation rewarming on Shelly. The first responders were astonished at what had taken place, and within moments, mother, 
and sun were soaring overhead. As the others stood silently watching the helicopter disappear behind the trees, <clears throat> they were overcome by a sense of peace. Eric sank down to his knees and the others followed, hands linked, eyes closed. Thank you, Eric said simply. Dear Lord, thank you. New scene. In dry clothes, Bree, Ricky, and Joey sat stunned and exhausted on the overstuffed sofa in the cabin. Eric had left for the hospital and thought it best for them to wait at the cabin. Their conversation recapped the occurrences of the day, each telling their own point of view. Ricky finally broke the spell, directing his attention at Joey. I bet you're tired and hungry, little man. Bree stood. I'll make you guys something to eat. Fifteen minutes later, they sat together on the sofa again, munching on sandwiches. Joey yawned and leaned against Bree. Do you think Mom has opened her eyes yet? Probably, Bree answered wistfully. She leaned her sleepy head against Ricky's shoulder, and he put his arm around her, offering the support, the support he was sure she needed. Joey sat up, crawled across Bree, and into Ricky's lap, where he fell fast asleep. Gently, Ricky carried Joey to bed and came back to join Bree, and she snuggled close to him. You were wonderful today, Bree said softly. It makes you realize how fast life can change. Life is so precious. I think people don't tend don't I think people tend to take it for granted. Ricky rubbed his hand over her shoulder. I don't think I've taken it for granted for a very long time. Bree looked up at his face. You're thinking of your own mother, aren't you? He sighed. I wasn't as lucky as you. He gazed at her youthful face. He had always thought Shelley to be beautiful, and Bree took after her mother in that way, yet Bree was so very different from her mom. Shelley was simplicity. Bree was exotic. Long, straight, shiny, chestnut brown hair fell just past her shoulders. Her lips were dark pink and full, her gray eyes hypnotic. She was taller and much more feminine than Shelley. One of the largest differences showed in their personalities. Shelley seemed innocent and vulnerable. Even though now a black belt, she seemed to be the one to need protection. Bree was all self-assurance and confidence, cool under pressure and a true sexual being. She was beautiful and she knew it. It seemed ironic to Ricky that Bree was the virgin. As if reading his thoughts, she turned to him, put her hands softly on Ricky's shoulders and moved close. He swallowed hard and drew in a breath. <clears throat> All that happened today. You know what that makes me want to do, she asked with a sweet smile. Ricky smiled back. No. What? This, she whispered as she pressed her lips to his. Too tired to resist after what they'd just been through, he accepted the offering. Her warm sweetness felt too good. Emotion from the day mixed with raw desire almost overcame him. She wrapped her arms around his head and pulled him to her. He kissed her heatedly, fervently, and a picture of what he wanted to do flashed through his mind. Breathing heavily, he looked into her eager eyes and closed his own in defense against them. He thought of Joey in the other room and sat up, making space between them. Bree, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get carried away. No, Ricky, don't stop. Not this time. It's okay, she pleaded. He shook his head. Some hidden strength stopped him. Joey slept in the next room, and Bree's mom lay clinging to life in a hospital. Even if he decided to do what he vowed he wouldn't, he couldn't do it in this situation. He rose quickly. Ricky, she whined. I'm sorry, he said. She rose and put her arms around his neck, and he stepped away. Bree, I'm not kidding. She smiled. She heard the same authority in his voice as she'd heard so often in Eric's. You know you want me. Ricky rolled his eyes. That has no bearing on my decision. She frowned and he smiled. He sat down and tugged her arm to sit her next to him. Let's talk about this, okay? Ricky said gently. Bree, you know how I feel about you. You know I'm in love with you. Have been for a long time. And that makes this even harder for me. There's nothing I'd like better than to make love to you, but I also know you're not in love with me, and somehow I feel like I'd be taking advantage of you. Bree laughed. Ricky, I'd be the one taking advantage of you. Don't you understand? I want you. I want you to have sex with me. Ricky sighed. 
You've never had sex. You're in love with the idea. You don't know what you want. <clears throat> Brief round. Okay, Ricky, you're right. I don't really know what I want. I'm so young, I don't know how I feel. What do I know? It, what I do know is life can be cut short. And before that happens to me, I want to know what it's all about. I want someone to make me a woman. And there's no one in the world I trust more than you. I believe you love me. And maybe someday I'll fall in love with you. And maybe not. But still, someone has to be my first. And I want it to be you. Ricky gazed at the cat-like creature. She touched him. He ran the back of his hand across her cheek. You bestow upon me a great honor, he said softly. Then you will, she asked eagerly. I will not, he said. Please understand. It's not you. It's that I, I don't believe in having sex outside of marriage. Marriage? I'm only 18. I'm too young to get married. Exactly. Too young for marriage. Too young to be having sex. You're kidding. Girls much younger than me are having sex. Well, that doesn't make it right. The phone rang, which gave Ricky a reprieve. He rushed to answer it. Hi, Dad. How are they? Eric's voice was quiet and slow. Mark's fine. His arm was broken, and he's already in a cast. They want to keep him overnight for observation since he was knocked unconscious by the fall. I've been with him since I arrived, but he's sleeping soundly. They just said I can go in to see Shelley as soon as they get her to a room. Her body temperature is back to normal. They think she's okay neurologically, but we will follow up with a specialist. And I'll get back to you after I see her. You sound tired, Dad. Are you okay? I am tired, but Shelley's being alive makes everything okay. The main thing right now is seeing her. Eric paused a moment. Ricky, thanks for your help today. The words were simple and didn't need any further embellishment. You're welcome, Dad. Glad I was there to help. Eric hung up the phone as he watched them wheel Shelley to her room and looking small and frail. Finally, a nurse came to get him. She's awake and asking for you, Mr. Kino. Eric rushed in. Her eyes were closed, golden lashes against pale cheeks. A monitor fed by electrodes attached to her chest sounded her heart rate, a beautiful sound. Standing beside her bed, he gently touched her hand. The big brown eyes opened and looked up at him, making his heart leap, and he smiled at her. Hello there, he said softly. Hi, she whispered. How do you feel? Uh, like someone's been pounding on my chest. Eric smiled. That was Ricky, not me. She regarded him for a long time. I thought I'd never see you again, she finally said. Tears welled in Eric's eyes. I thought the same thing. Shelley was surprised. You? The great master? Sheds tears? Tears of joy and gratitude, he said as he kissed her hand. How are Mark and Joey? She asked anxiously. Mark is in a room downstairs on the children's wings, sound asleep. He broke his arm, but he's fine. And Joey is at the cabin. He's also fine. I want to see them, she said weakly. I know. Maybe tomorrow, okay? She frowned and tried to sit up. Her stomach muscles were sore, and Eric gently restrained her. Behave, Shelley. You're not getting up. You can see the boys tomorrow. I want to go see Mark now, she demanded, not very convincingly. Eric smiled. I love it when you're mean and demanding. Then you'll take me to Mark, she asked. No. She closed her eyes. I'm too tired to argue with you, although doing so gives me great pleasure, she said, her eyes still closed. Sleep, baby. I'll be right here. Eric, she whispered. Yes. Will you go see Mark? I don't want him to be alone. If that's what you want, I'll go stay with him and come back and check on you every 30 minutes. How's that? Will that keep you from worrying? She smiled. That would be great. Thank you. There's no need for thanks, Shelley. I'd do anything for you. Eric? Yes? I'm hungry. He laughed. Me too. I'll tell the nurse and see if you can eat yet, okay? Okay, she agreed, falling instantly asleep. 
Watching her sleep, seeing her chest move up and down with her breathing, Eric took a moment to give thanks once more. He went over the events in his mind again and again, making notes on how easy it had been to slip into fear and how listening to the still small, small voice had helped him. And finally, he did as he'd promised and went to see Mark. But after spending the evening going back and forth between rooms, he asked to speak with the hospital administrator. New scene. Shelley didn't wake until morning, and when she did, she found a beautiful little boy in a bed beside her. Hi, Mom, Mark smiled. Hi, baby. How did you get in here? Master Kino asked him to move me. Shelley smiled at the thoughtfulness. Well, where is he? He went back to the cabin. He's going to bring Joey to see us. New scene. Near dawn, Eric arrived back at the cabin to find three young people intertwined on the sofa, sleeping soundly. They stirred at the sound of him tossing the keys on the table, and Ricky jumped to his feet. Dad, how's Shelly and Mark? She's going to be just fine, and Mark's feeling much better too, but right now I'm too tired to talk. He stumbled into the bedroom and fell across the bed, and Ricky poked his head in. Would you like me to make you something to eat? Later, he grunted as he kicked off his shoes. You could have Joey ready to go back with me by noon. Ricky came over and dug his fingers into his father's back and shoulders, kneading, soothing, and relaxing him. I know I've said this before, but you're a good son, Ricky, he murmured. You're a good man, Dad. I hope I grow up to be just like you. Eric reached back and patted Ricky's hand. And that was the last thing he remembered until noon, when Joey jumped on the bed and then onto his stomach. Eric grunted. I am the master, Joey yelled triumphantly. Master of what, Eric asked, still groggy from sleep. Master of the bed, Joey announced loudly. Really? Well, then what does that make me, Eric asked, raising up on his elbows. You are the servant, Joey said sternly. I should have known, Eric laughed. And what does my lord and master ask of me, Eric said humbly. Take me to the queen, Joey commanded. Eric brought his hands together. As you wish, he quoted. Would my master mind if I eat first? Of course not. We can't have your stomach growling before the queen, Joey said regally. And may I also bathe? We can't have you stinky either, Joey giggled, holding his nose. Eric pushed him over. Oops. Sorry, master, a little accident. Yeah, right, Joey answered sarcastically. Do me a favor, Jojo, and ask Ricky to make me some lunch. He already did. Eric smiled. He's a pretty good kid, huh, Joey stated with a nod of his head. Eric laughed. Yeah, he is, and so are you. I'm not a kid. Really? Then what are you? Joey rolled his eyes. I already told you, I am the master. Eric grinned. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Once bathed, dressed, and fed, Eric's energy returned, and he prepared to head back to the hospital with Joey. Eric put his hand on Ricky's shoulder. We won't be back until morning. Ricky nodded. Oh, and by the way, Eric remembered, I used your name at the hospital to pull some strings so that Mark could be in Shelley's room. I promised a demonstration for the kids. No problem, Dad. Glad I could help. Eric gathered Joey a case of personal items for Shelley and Mark, a tin can filled with wildflowers, and left for the hospital. Bree snuggled on the couch next to Ricky, tracing her finger over the muscles of his chest. Oh, I forgot to say, this is a new scene. Bree snuggled on the couch next to Ricky, tracing her finger over the muscles of his chest. They'd been alone at the cabin all night and talked at length about morality, about being in control of one's base instincts and God. They'd given way to kissing a few times, but Ricky stayed strong. You've been with a lot of girls, haven't you? She asked curiously. He shook his head. We are not going to have this conversation. Oh, come on, Ricky, tell me. No, ma'am. Then there must be something to tell. Well, whatever mistakes I've made in the past are between me and God. Bree gave a small hmph. Okay, then. Has your dad been with a lot of women? He looked down at her incredulously. My father's personal life is just that, personal. Fair enough, I guess, but really, tell me something. I mean, he's dating my mom. 
I'm not kidding, Bree. This conversation will not happen. Ricky shook his head. I don't believe this. A few minutes ago, I was kissing you, and now we're having an argument. Bree laughed. An argument? I'm not arguing. This is just me, my personality. Mommy calls me a she-devil. Ricky chuckled. Your mom has a way with words. He sighed, thinking how hard it is to love this girl. He didn't even understand how he came to love her so quickly. Sure, she's a looker, but he had his choice of beautiful women, and it certainly wasn't because she was anything like her mother. Shelly is a sweetheart, he thought. Bree isn't even close to sweet. So why did he love her? Is it her confidence that attracts him? Her strength? And is it attraction, or does he truly love her? Trying to imagine himself without her the rest of his life was impossible. He was a guy who knew his own mind, usually, yet he also knew he was young enough to err in judgment, especially in matters of the heart. She had wanted him to make love to her, and yet do it only for her educational benefit. She wanted him to stay emotionally uninvolved. She didn't realize what a difficult thing she asked of him, and she was so young and so full of life, and he wasn't that much older than her, but she made him feel ancient. She moved away so she could look up into his face. Tell me now, Ricky, how do I rate compared to other girlfriends? Uh-uh, no. Come on, Ricky, there must be something about me that stands out. He sighed. You're the prettiest. The prettiest? Oh, please, that is lame. Tell me something else, she demanded. Okay, okay. He paused to think. You're the youngest, she frowned. Try again. Ricky's brow furrowed. You're the meanest, she laughed. Ricky marveled that hearing that didn't seem to bother her a bit. There has to be something juicier than that, Bree continued. Okay, he paused. You're the only virgin, he confessed. Really? Now that's interesting. Out of all the girls you've dated, that's crazy. You think? She giggled. So am I a good kisser compared to all the experienced girls you've dated? You are terrific, he said softly. Tell me something specific, she demanded. Ricky frowned. I'm not going to pick it apart and analyze it. Oh, Ricky, really, she declared as she pushed away and sat straight up. I need to know if there are things that I should do differently, things I don't do that I should or things I do do that I shouldn't, so that when I'm with someone else, I won't seem like a little girl. Ricky got to his feet, wincing at the stab of pain in his heart. He put his hands on his hips and briefly closed his eyes with the anguish that comes from loving and not being loved in return. No, Bree, he said quietly. Don't change a thing. You are perfect. Thanks, she said dreamily. New scene. Shelley woke early Sunday morning to find two handsome Korean faces peering down at her. She smiled. Did anyone ever tell you guys you could pass for brothers, she joked. They laughed. Actually, you did once, but I don't think you would remember it, Justin answered. Huh? Never mind, Jason replied. I understand we almost lost our favorite sparring partner. Shelly smiled. You're not that lucky. Justin brushed her hair back out of her face. If you had died, I would have been next. Nonsense. So what are you guys doing here? We're back for the duration, champ. Shelly smiled. That's great. Where's Eric? He and the boys are trying to arrange your release. It's done, Eric beamed from the door. As soon as the doc checks you out one more time, we're out of here. Before breakfast, Shelley frowned. She's getting to be as bad as you and Ricky, Justin laughed, always hungry. Where are the boys, Shelley asked. Eric motioned over her shoulder, over his shoulder, flirting with the nurses. I wish I had someone to flirt with me, she pouted. You've got Justin and Jason there. Aren't they good enough, Eric teased. If I don't get my morning kiss, I'm going to be hard to live with, Shelley warned Eric. Grinning, Jason and Justin looked at each other and shrugged. Jason bent over and kissed her mouth. She pushed him away with a gasp. Not you, she snarled. Justin shrugged and performed the same task. Well, looks like you've had more than your share of good morning kisses. I'll check on the boys, Eric turned and left the room. Shelley pouted. Thanks a lot, guys. Because of you, I don't get my kiss. Oh, believe me, Jason laughed. It was our pleasure. She tried to hit him, but he jumped back. Mark and Joey came running in and jumped up on the bed, hugging and kissing her. 
Mom, Mark says we still got to go to school tomorrow. And Mark would be right, Shelly answered. Ah, we don't want to go home, Joey cried. Two more weeks of school, Shelly reminded. And boy, tomorrow you guys are going to have an adventure to tell your friends about. Their, fr their eyes lit up at the idea of telling their classmates about the bridge. And you'll be right back here on Thursday, she added. Eric came back into the room. We need to have a little powwow. About what? And please don't try to talk me out of the mart again. What makes you think I'm going to do that? You do it every time I end up in the hospital. Do I? I don't think I like being so predictable. Nevertheless, there are some things to consider. You've had a setback, a major setback. If you were to drop out now, no one would blame you. Are you kidding me, Shelley asked. After all we've been through, do you honestly think I'd drop out? Eric ran a hand over her, his hair. You realize we have only two weeks left to train here and one week in L.A. before the tournament. We're not sure how this little episode may affect you. Things from here on out are not going to be easy. Shelly laughed. You say that like it's been a breeze so far. Shelly, I'm not kidding around now. You can bow out gracefully and everyone would understand. But I feel fine. I'm a little sore and maybe a little tired, but I'm fine. No pain? My ribs are sore. But the worst thing is the sore spot on my back where a rock was pressing up into my kidney. If that's the worst, then I think we have nothing to worry about. Shelly looked from face to face. She'd never accomplished anything hard in her life. There had always been a good reason to bow out. She didn't want to quit. What do you guys think? She asked Mark and Joey. Go for it, Mom, Joey answered without hesitation. Mark put his hand on hers. I really want you to fight, Mom. I think you're going to win. Yeah, and then you'll be famous, Joey added. Oh, that's real important, Shelly teased, pinching his nose. She looked up at Eric. I'm going to the mart, she maintained firmly. All right, the boys, all right, the boys cheered. Eric nodded. Okay, then we have to, a lot to do. Justin's brought more films of your opponents. We can go over some of them tonight. I don't think you're ready for any physical work yet. Sure I am. I feel great. I need to get right back at it. Okay, well, we'll see what happens when we get back to the cabin. The doc checked her over, gave her a clean bill of health, and sent them on their way. They stopped for breakfast, and Eric called Ricky to let him know that they were on their way home. As they walked out to their cars after breakfast, Shelley smiled up at the sun. I'm walking on my own two feet. I'm alive. I'm breathing, she laughed. I'm warm and dry, and I'll never take that for granted again. Eric looked over at Justin and Jason. I was just about to give her an after-breakfast kiss unless you guys wanted to. They smiled. No, no, you go ahead. We don't want to appear to be selfish. Thanks. He took her in his arms and kissed her soundly. They arrived at a spotless shining cabin. Wow, it's obvious you two have been hard at work, Shelley exclaimed as she was hugged rigorously by her daughter. Yes, we have, Bree giggled, winking at Ricky. Ricky's eyes told Bree to shut up. He hugged Shelly. It's great to see you standing on your feet, Mom. Welcome back. Thanks, she said with a yawn and headed for the couch. How are you feeling, Mom? Bree asked. Well, I was fine a few hours ago, but suddenly I'm so sleepy. She sank down into the soft cushion. Well, your body has been through such a trauma. Of course you're worn out, Bree answered. Ricky swooped up Mark and had him describe all the people who'd signed his cast. Would you like to lie down a while, Shelly? Eric asked. No, I need to get to work. Let's go over some of the films. Eric pulled video up on the laptop, and Shelly watched as her teachers pointed things out to her and then asked her to point things out to them. She tried to concentrate, but just focusing her eyes on the screen seemed completely overwhelming. Sweat ran from her forehead, her breath became labored, and abruptly she stood. I'll be right back. She rushed to the kitchen, splashed cold water on her face. She didn't bother drying her face, and the air hitting her wet skin felt cool and comforting. And she muddled her way back to the couch, stopping to open a window on the way. What is it, hon? Eric asked. Nothing, I guess. It's just a little warm, don't you think? Shelley sat, squinting her eyes and forced fo forcing herself to look at the screen, but everything seemed confusing. It seemed she was watching through a thick fog, barely able to make out what was happening. 
She put her fingers to her temples, and Eric took her hands down and looked into her eyes. Tell me how you feel, he prodded gently. I feel hot, tired, closed in. She stood suddenly. It's just a rock. Understanding filled his eyes. That's right. It's just a rock that got in the way. And it's just water. It's just water, he repeated, watching her fight the panic down. Cold water, she corrected. Very cold, he agreed, taking her in his arms. But the words didn't give her the comfort she sought, and Shelley jerked away. What is wrong with me? Eric sighed. I told you, this trauma may have been too much. You've been through a lot, babe. No one would blame you if you dropped out now. I would, she said softly. Eric took her by the hand. Come on. He led her back to the scene of the accident, stood beside her as she placed her hands on the large rock. It doesn't seem so big now, standing next to it. It only comes to the middle of my thighs. I know, Eric said, feeling the frustration he'd felt that day. The day before. I need to change that. It seems I should have been able to move it. He shook his head. You did move it, she reminded him. She rubbed her hands over its surface, feeling its hardness. It was warm on top, the sun doing its job. The cold water rushed over her feet, making her shiver, and she climbed up onto the boulder and let the sun warm her. It's just a rock, she said. Eric smiled and nodded. I think I'm okay now. Let's do it, she said with renewed energy. And that is the end of chapter 25.